continue our theme tonight, Brother Given is going to speak on another of the things that are yet to come, that uh, talking about every man shall have praise of God. I knew a man once who was a leader in the church that uh, wouldn't wouldn't lead us in the song that shall be glory for me because he first off he didn't understand what the, the song was about the man what he meant was that for him glory would be seeing the Lord but he thought it meant glory for me and so he wouldn't lead us in that song well uh, I think this matter of having praise of God presents another opportunity for misunderstanding. There are people who would hear the topic of that that uh, sermon and think, well, that seems, that seems rather bold. That seems rather self-centered that we should be looking forward to being praised. I mean, we're nothing, right? We didn't do anything. So how is it that God is going to praise us now, they create a conflict that doesn't exist because God only does what's right. So if God is going to praise us, this is going to be a right thing. So then we have to ask the question, so what exactly are we talking about? That God is going to praise men, and for what? Scriptures tell us that we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus. So just as the heavens and the earth are the work of his fingers, we ourselves are his workmanship. And men, there are some very high expressions of praise by mankind. But there's a limitation in the praises of men because they can only go as high as what men can see and what men can understand and their ability to express what's in their, their heart and what has been in their eye. So how is it that God is going to be rightly glorified by mankind? See, there is there's a connection here between the praising of men who are his own children and the glory of God. And in that day that we're looking forward to, in particular, uh, at the beginning, the commencement of judgment, when God begins to open up his works and to show the, the wisdom and the reasoning and the truth that was at work that, that uh, actually uh, propelled us through what we call the history of the earth up until that time, that, that one event to which we're looking that uh, we're going to see when God praises his children, this is going to be the highest expression of his glory because he is going to reveal his work in his children. Now, people who think that uh, there's, there's not, they, they have this, this separation in their thinking between what we profess and, and hold to verbally and then what we actually are. Now, when God praises men, it's going to be the complete package. There's not going to be any praise for a vain profession or a lifeless work, but rather these are going to be the works of God as they have been expressed in his people. And it's going to be a real work, a substantive work, one that has evidence of God's working in it. So we want to to think here. I'm, I'm sure Brother Given is going to go somewhere somewhere else with this. I wanted to read just a couple of scriptures here. Psalm 79 and 13. Uh, I'm going to back up to 11 because it kind of tells why David is saying this. Let the sighing of the prisoner come before thee according to the greatness of thy power. Preserve those that are appointed to die. And render unto our neighbors sevenfold unto their bosom their reproach, wherewith they have reproached thee, O Lord. 
So we, thy people and sheep of thy pasture, will give thee thanks forever. We will show forth thy praise to all generations. We shall be to the everlasting praise of God. And he is going to make sure that nobody misses any of it. And that's going to be his. See, whenever you praise God, this is an insightful, and it's a, uh, it's something that you have seen. And it's an expression of praise. Otherwise, it's just a bunch of vain talking. If you yourself haven't seen it, then what you're doing isn't praising. It's something else. God, when he praises his people, he's going to let us see what he sees. And that's going, to, that's going to provoke more praise, and it's going to redound to the glory of God. That's just like in the, whenever uh, Paul was talking about the circumcision not made by hands, and them that are Jews inwardly and Jews outwardly, and that one of them is to the praise of God's glory, and one of them is not, that now, one is uh, has the praise of men, one has the praise of God. That's the praise that, that we desire. At any rate, I'm, I'll, I'm going to go ahead and, and close there. That's just one of the things in the judgment, but let us remember that as we consider that God is going to praise men, that what he is doing is that this is part of God's justification of all of his works and words and it's, it's part of the opening up of the eternal and everlasting God, creator of heaven and earth, to his creation. 